Yeah, turn it up. Oh, hey there. Sorry about that, I didn't see you standing there. My name is Wombat Combat, and this is Wombat Wednesdays, where you guys send me your questions, and I do my best to make a tutorial video out of it, but mainly just talk really weirdly and just kind of stammer. Today, we're going to go over some automation, some effects, and make a good baseline and EQ in that kick drum. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, we got Ableton booted up. Got about 10 tracks in here. And what we're going to do is, let me set that to record real quick. So we got drums here, snares, and a couple other synths. Got some bass noises in there, got some melodies. But right off the bat, we're going to get the drums tight. We want to do that so that way we can build the track around the drums. And it makes for a quicker and more flowy process. So we're going to go to the master here. And you see Spectrum. Um, some of the plugins are going to be already in place, but I'll show you guys what to do. We go to Spectrum, and we're going to want to use the master preset. And that's what's going on down here. Now with these drums, what we got here is this. So those are some pretty all right drums. Um, down here, you see we got Brooklyn Compression. You're going to find that. Let's scroll up here in your audio effect rack under dynamic processing, Brooklyn compression. I really like Brooklyn compression. You can use a regular compressor. Uh, it's just really to get more body out of the bass or body out of the kick, rather. So there we go with the Brooklyn, and you can kind of hear the difference there. Now the issue as we throw it in our master. Um, you want your lowest bass frequency to be at negative 13. That's what this represents down here. You want that at negative 13. Right now we're sitting at negative 14. Now, if you have Fab Filter, this one's already in, you can kind of hear a little bit of a difference, but not much. So we just open up Fab Filter. Now, basically what's going on here is we have a low cut set to 36 hertz. And then we got the high cut right about a thousand because really we just want this over here in this area. That's all we want. So we kind of peaked it up a little bit there just to get the real body of the kick. So we'll go back to the master and we'll see down here is that negative 13 now. Now for every instrument that we add in, we want to make sure that it always stays at negative 13 and doesn't jump up to like negative 10 or even negative 15. We want to keep it right at this level. This keeps the whole song really mixed down right and keeps it from a frequency clash. So we have that going and I'm going to add in the snares and there that goes. So this is kind of what we have. And that's pretty tight. And so next step would be we'll play with this bass. So we got a little bit of a wobble going on here. I'll go ahead and start it up in a second. That's a pretty sweet wobble, you may say. Now, the problem is, as sick as that is, now we see down here, we're shooting at a negative 12. Because what's going on, and it will scroll back up top, bring up Mr. Fab. This is what's going on. This is a fab filter I had set up. I had the low cut at 97. Now, without that, we'd be messing with a lot of like lower range frequencies in here that would be clashing with that kick. So what we want to do with this is give it a low cut. Um, I usually try to shoot for 100. Uh, just try to really cut out the bass because we just want it for the uh, the attack, just for the sound. And if you don't have Fab Filter, I also have this preset done in EQ8, which effectively does the same thing. We got, what is that? We got five points. I boosted that mid range because we really like that sound there a little bit, the bell curve. But this one is set on the low cut, the two set on a bell, just to kind of really tune that down. 
you see. And so we'll go back to the master. And you see we're right back at negative 13, which is where exactly where we want to be. Still have that bass noise, and we still have that bass feel. Now, coming into another layer. Boom, there's that one. So go back to the master. And this one brings us straight down to negative 10. It sounds cool, but overall we got some frequency clash going on here. So we'll go back to the mighty silent, open up fad filter, kind of look what's going on here. Gotta turn that on real quick. So see how much bass noise is there. So once again we have the low cut at 97, boosted it right around 1500 just to really get that sound that I was searching for out. So this is what it should look like. Once again, we can do the same thing with EQ8, get the same exact result. So here we have two separate bass sounds going. Not much of a frequency class going on there because where the body of the sound is, we've taken it out, kind of moved some stuff around. So that's pretty tight. Now we'll go over to here. We've got a uh, little bit of trippy effects going on. We'll wait till the next bar and we'll go. So that's pretty tight. Let that play out for a second. Now what we have going on here, we have our pegiator and then we have our sins. In our sins we have a simple delay and a ballad reverb. Do that. You just kind of throw the effect into your return track. Turn that bad boy down or up, whichever. Uh, really useful for VSTs like Glitch where you can't really set the dry and wet within just from here. So you can put it into a return track, kind of get a dry or wet feel and you can modulate that. So what we have on the Apergiator, speaking of modulation, is you see it's kind of going weird like that. So I'll go ahead and open up this track. Get it to our Poggy Idar. Now, what's going on here is we've kind of messed with the sync rate as you can hear. Now this takes a lot of bit of playing around. I'll drag that down real quick. So let's just clear this in a little real quick. And then we'll kind of get a vibe for this. And we'll play that one out. So that's what it sounds like normally. And with the modulation we have this which gives it like a really sick, kind of like progressive, kind of like a good feel to it. So that's going on. So that's pretty much the basics of starting a track there. You want to make sure that you have no frequencies clashing with your bass noise. It should look something like this. You can do the same at EQ8. I just set the low cut and then a high cut. You need two different ones there. I'm almost rambling. Anyways, this is kind of what we want from our bass kick. And then, from our good friends, the bass line, this is kind of what we're looking for there. We got that attack from the bass without the badness of the bass. Now, we could switch it around and do the opposite, have the kick drum be here, and have that wobbly nice bass here, whatever suits your fancy. And that concludes our video for today.